Brass Knuckles of Justice. Political tribalism. It's a problem that we, as U.S. citizens, don't want to admit that we have. At its core, we are divided between two political ideas. That is, the conservative and the liberal ideal. This isn't to say we don't have fringe and independent thinkers in our country, but chances are, you're not one of them. Let me put it another way. In 2012, about 129 million votes were cast for president. Less than 2% were cast for somebody not nominated by one of the two major parties. So if you were in that 2%, well, I congratulate you. You're walking away from the game. I'm probably not saying anything you don't already know. So for you guys, go ahead and click this annotation for a different Danger Inc. video and this annotation for a video featuring cats. I got your back. The rest of you, I've recently concluded that we all have a very special flaw as humans. This flaw makes it very difficult to remain politically and logically consistent throughout our lives. I call this flaw emotional logic. We get attached to politicians and political ideas really easily and so intensely that we lose all ability to reason. That's why normally pacifistic pundits like Lawrence O'Donnell, Crystal Ball, or Rachel Maddow felt the need to criticize Rand Paul when he was speaking out against the executive office's secretive and often irresponsible policy of drone warfare. It's why Governor Rick Perry, who normally touts himself as a budget hawk, proposed a drug screening program for welfare recipients when such programs always cost more than they save. It's why Democrats kept quiet when President Obama sent Vice President Biden to Iraq to attempt to negotiate an extended occupation of Iraq with American troops. It's why we hear little protests from the left regarding the tens of thousands of military contractors still stationed in Iraq. It's why the right protested against President Obama's involvement in Libya, despite their normal policy of bombing Arabic countries who have leaders that we don't like. It's why the left can acknowledge their marked misunderstanding of what an assault rifle actually is. And it's why the Tea Party, Glenn Beck, and a myriad of other principled conservatives fell in line behind Mitt Romney, the guy whose state-level healthcare model was the template for Obamacare. You know that feeling you get when you look at your bank receipt, and even though the math works out, you find yourself saying, this balance doesn't seem right. That's emotional logic. That's logic you create in your brain that's fueled by your emotions. It's ignoring facts to placate a preference generally bred by your feelings. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that emotional logic is wrong. It's why we do a lot of things that don't hurt anyone. It's why you buy a puppy. It's why you thought a boy band was the pinnacle of music when you were 14. It's why I strap a helmet on my head and ride a mountain bike down muddy hills in the woods all summer. Emotional logic is how we justify our seemingly illogical actions. The problem lies when you allow your emotional logic to dictate someone else's life at the barrel of a gun. See, when someone like Crystal Ball goes on national television and says she trusts the Democrat she voted for over a Republican she doesn't with the US drone program, she doesn't understand the problem beyond her own feelings about it. She's having a debate about which tribe should have control of the guns, instead of debating about whether or not any tribe should have any control to begin with. The way it stands now, the drone program is exclusively within the domain of the executive. Their protocol, their judgment. So yeah, I feel a whole lot better about the program when the decider, so to speak, is President Obama. Like, comment, subscribe. That's why normally pacifistic pundits like Lawrence O'Donnell and Crystal Ball or Rachel Raddow, whoa, 